So now maybe it's occurred to you how clever God has been to design everything the way he did. If truth is going to be free, then it's going to be free to be zero, which is analogous to birth. You're born empty. You're born a zero. Brand new soul. Which makes you kind of like the angels too, because even though they were born with all kinds of knowledge pre-deposited in their soul, the soul is new. The volition is just now starting so unlike the angels we don't even understand the inputs we're getting we're newly getting them the angels already had a bunch of information in them from the get-go Adam and the woman too had a bunch of information in them from the get-go but knowing that information that's new if tomorrow some guy knocks on your door from Blaylock and Blaylock Law Firm in Scotland and tells you your great uncle MacGyver willed you his entire estate, which is quite huge, you would be the owner of that estate, but you wouldn't know about it. And you wouldn't know what to do with it. You would have to actually play with the assets in that estate that are already yours before you would really know anything about them. You are even born with a body. And unlike everybody else, I mean the angels for example, you don't even know how to use your body. I don't know how much you know about child growth, but a child doesn't even know how to lift its head and does not know how to see when it's born. You can see that in some animals too. Certain animals are blind at birth. It takes a few days for them to get sight. But a child can't even lift its head for a while. It, it Its body... It, the child is one great big sponge and it rapidly, rapidly, rapidly learns. But it doesn't have any innate ability to do anything. It has no built-in skill. It learns everything from scratch. It doesn't have any instincts. It's one great big bundle of learning from scratch. Well, but at the beginning when a person, Adam and the woman, for example, or the angels, they're made perfect. Well, part of perfection would mean a kind of perfect knowledge. Okay, but perfect knowledge doesn't mean perfect volition. Volition is optional whether you want to use it that way or not. Otherwise, it's not free. Now, what you end up coming to grips with is the fact that, okay, we're all childish in both our understanding and our use of what we already understand. And in that sense, we have in common with the angels our whole structure. They had a bunch of knowledge in them at creation. But how are they going to interact with that? What would they think about what they knew? See, understanding means not merely having the knowledge in your head and you can spit it off. This is a big mistake we make as humans. We think because you have a lot of information in your head, therefore you're smart. No. That's not smarts. Smart is knowing how to interconnect the information, how to use it. But that depends on understanding. And that depends on how you play with the knowledge you got. So you can have a lot of knowledge, but if you don't play with it, 
then you're just as dumb as a newborn baby. And to play with it, you got to want to. How do you play with information? You analyze it. How do you analyze information? You want to. How do you want to? You question. And there's the rub. Do you question? Do you ask why? Now, we come to ask why on a lot of things. But there are a whole bunch of things we never ask why. I do not ask why my car works. I am not interested. If it doesn't work, I want to know why it works only because I want it to work again. I'm really not interested in why it doesn't work. All I'm interested in doing is calling up the phone number of my car mechanic and saying, Hi, my car doesn't work. Will you fix it? I really don't want to know how it works. My car mechanic loves knowing how it works. He loves troubleshooting what's wrong with it. He's interested in that topic. I'm not. God bless him that he is. Or my car wouldn't work. And if it didn't work, I'd have to go buy another one. And the last thing on earth I want to do is buy a car. They don't make them well anymore, for one thing. Number two, there are too many different brands. Number three, they don't tell you really what what's in the car and what it does. They just give you a bunch of jargon. And I have no idea what that jargon is. And I don't want to learn what it is. I want a car that will take me to the grocery store and safely take me on the freeway when I gotta drive one. Which I try not to do. That's it. That's all I want. And if it's not going to do that for me, then I just do not have a car. If I have to go too far, I hire a cab. See? Those are all interests being expressed. And therefore, knowledge do too. Where the interest is high, more knowledge. Where the interest is low, less knowledge. Where the interest is high, more understanding. Where the interest is low, less understanding. And when you're a child, your interests are childish. And so long as your interests are childish, so will be your knowledge, and so will be your understanding. And therefore, anything that is not within those interests will be, how do you want to say it, it will not be understood, it will not be known, and you'll be hostile. And you'll especially be hostile to anybody who has those interests, and anybody who has that knowledge, and anybody who has that understanding, because you don't. Because that's how children are. If you want to know what the old sin nature is, just look at any kid. Children are frightened by what they don't know. Children are frightened of the unfamiliar. Children are hostile to what they don't know and what's unfamiliar. Or, because they're undiscerning, if they're curious because they're interested, they're, uh, how do you want to call it, it's unsafe, their interest. Because they have no discernment. They don't try to discern. They just, yes, no, I feel, feels good, looks good, sounds good, want this, don't want that. And they don't analyze because they don't know how. They don't have enough information because they're children. That's the whole sin nature. It's childish. The woman had a childish objection to authority. Satan took advantage of that because that's his own problem. He's childish. Satan's essentially childish. In his soul, he's basically saying, Yeah, I want my good deeds to count before God. I'm mad at God because my, my good deeds don't count. Sound familiar? So the rest of us, we reflect him. We want, I want somebody to love me. Okay. When you're five years old, that's kind of cute. 
When you're 55 years old, that's not cute anymore. Too many of us are 55 years old with the same attitude in us. I grew up with people like that. I learned early not to be like that. It's not cute. It means that somebody's clinging to you and every single second they breathe, you're supposed to do something to reassure them. Until the point where you stop wanting to reassure them. They are so constipated spiritually and mentally and emotionally that they just got to grab onto everybody else. And no matter how much anybody feeds them or waters them or nurtures them, it just gets worse. Now what do you do with bratty kids like that? Well, last increment, pray. Pray that God clobber them. Pray that God help them. Pray that God help you. The best way to help them is for God to help you. It's a really sad thing. Because when you finally start to mature in Christ, you don't care about yourself anymore. It's like having money, really. This is really a wealth problem. It's the truest wealth problem there is. Here you are rich and everybody around you is spiritually poor. Here you are spiritually regular and they're spiritually constipated. And you can't do anything for them. Nor do they want to, because the reason they're the way they are is they're not interested in him. And all the money in the world cannot make people interested in proper use of money. All the spiritual riches in the world can't make people interested in God. They have to have it in themselves, of themselves, through their own volition, freely. Or it ain't going to happen. So what do you do? Have God grow you because there ain't going to be no other solution. That's a hard thing to say. It's even harder to live with. But one of the lessons we never learn from history. See, we all of our yesterdays aren't helping us understand today, so we're not creating a better tomorrow. One of the things we never learn from history, learn from history that we don't learn from history, is that nobody ever learns. Except the hard way and that barely. So the human race is a bunch of little brats. That we all got to put up with the brattiness in ourselves and each other. And the only thing you can do for your fellow man that really helps your fellow man is to grow yourself. And if God happens to use you the meanwhile, and he will, you won't know how, and it doesn't matter. He'll do it. You know it. Just learn him. Yourself. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added to you. Ding, 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 ding. So that explains it, really. Satan smartest guy most beautiful creature ever to come from the hand of God still is that way he got stuck volitionally stuck on a childish need I want a credit for what I do Now, if the smartest guy ever to come from the hand of God got stuck like that, and is still stuck to this day, and is so stuck on that idea, loves it so much, it's holding his anti-integrity together, that he keeps on fighting God in the name of all of his own hallucinations about how good it would be if he beat his creator. Now you can understand why the human race isn't growing up. Why it never learns from history. If you want a thing that's false to be true, it won't matter how much contrary evidence there is. I want it to be true. And that's where we all end up 
the measure of a true maturity of a person is what happens when they don't get what they want. What do you do? Because that's where the inner child is stuck. How easy is it for you to give in? I don't mean give up, I mean give in. And when you give in, why do you do it? So you have to, you know, an adult analysis of a thing doesn't say, well, every time I give in, then that means I, I'm a child on that. No, that's black and white childish reasoning. Sometimes you give in because you're so strong. You let a thing hit you because you're so strong. Those childish babies in the barrios who think happiness is a warm gun, they're so childish they got to they got to infuse their manhood with some gun in their hand. And every little infraction and every little thing that displeases them, they have to shoot whoever was the who did it. And now I'm a man. I'm important because I shot down this other person with a gun. Really? You just proved yourself to be the loser and the guy you shot won over you. This is the story of life. We're all hallucinating like Satan. If I have this, if I do this, I will be good, I will be important, I will be happy. And childhood, going from childhood to adulthood, is essentially a cycling through of all those imagined outcomes. And you either have to physically go through it, learn the hard way, in order to realize that the outcome didn't produce the result that you imagined, or even if it did produce the result that you imagined, it did not make you happy. You either have to go through it yourself, or you can learn from watching others around you. Or you can learn by playing with the ideas in your head, analyzing them. And to the extent you're not doing that, you got to stay five years old, like Satan. And obviously having lots of knowledge and lots of power and lots of abilities does not help you grow up. Certainly doesn't make you happy. If there's nothing we've learned from history, it's that. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people have had all kinds of levels of power and ability and talent and famousness and, and whatever else the world rules over. And were they happy? No. And what happened to everybody around them? The people around them either were intimidated or jealous or grabby. Take your pick. So what didn't we learn from history? That none of that stuff works. Yeah, and God has all of it. And he doesn't want any of it for that reason. Do you see God pounding his chest, standing on the mountain saying, Hi, I'm number one. No. Do you see him priding himself on being God? No. Do you walk out into your backyard or to a yard or to a patch of grass, look down at the ants in the grass and say, ha ha, I'm better than you. I bet you don't do that. Why? And you'll laugh and say, well, Braina, it's, it's no big deal that I'm better than an ant. Yeah, that's right. Because you already know you're better. And it's not giving you any happiness, is it? Does it give you happiness? Chortled, hi, I'm better than you happiness to be better than an ant? No, because if it did, you'd be standing over that patch of grass pounding your chest and laughing at the ants and probably trying to kill them, which is something a child would do. Oh boy, I'm going to kill ants. Children do that because they're insecure and they're experimenting with power. If you already have power and you already have maturity, you don't experiment. You don't need to. And it doesn't give you any pleasure at all to be superior to an ant.
So why would it give God any pleasure to be superior to us? And what, in fact, is the actual truth? It's a pain in the neck to have kids. It's a pain in the neck to rear kids. It's a pain in the neck. And yeah, you got moments where, oh, I love the little boy or girl. But most of the time, honey, you got to clean up after their messes. All their ideas are childish. You never have time alone. Finally, you get some time alone to be with another adult, and they knock on your door. Mommy, Mommy, can I come sleep with you and Daddy? Oh, boy. There's a certain joy in parenting, but you are really glad when it ends. And you desperately want it to end on many, many days. So how do you think it is for God? So how do you think it really is to have the power and the ability and the knowledge and all the rest of it? A pain in the neck. But we're not there yet. Upo. Great chord. He just threw that at me. O U P Omega. Looks like a W in English. Upo. Not yet. Are we there yet, Dad? Are we at Disneyland yet? Are, I can't see over the top of your seat. Are, are, what, where are we on the freeway? We're on 605 freeway. Are we in Anaheim yet? Not yet, darling. Am I all grown up now? Not yet. Upo. That's what Satan's busy trying to do. He's busy trying to say, I'm all grown up now. And he couldn't be more childish. So we, the human race, will tell ourselves that we win something or we're grown up or we're important. We're just like daddy now. If we win President of the United States or have this house, this spouse, this jewelry, this something. If I look good, if I act right, and everybody says how great I am, then I must be. Never mind that you have to put them down in order to be better than them. So if they, you get their praise, what good is that to you? The praise of stupid people does not mean that you're good, does it? If everybody's praising you, but you have to put them down and they're stupid and inferior, then their praise is stupid and inferior. Which means they're praising a stupid and inferior thing, a.k.a. you. Oh. Well, then maybe I don't want their praise. Yeah. Now you're starting to grow up. But look at how the human race, <laughs> the human race has not grown at all. Oh, I got to be approved. Yeah, all you want to do if you want to sell something on TV is get on TV. And because you're on TV and everybody sees you, well, I saw it on TV, therefore it must be good. Yeah, and what kind of mind is drawing that conclusion? A childish one. And there you go, childishness, unprayed, everywhere you look. Bam, 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 like the front of Flintstones. Bam, bam, on Flintstones. If he smashed something, oh, wow, that's good. Yep. Bodies and smashing and having power over somebody else. And I'm better than you because I'm, I'm, I'm German. And I'm better than you because I'm French. And I'm better than you because I'm Jewish. And I'm better than you because I'm Greek. And I'm better than you because I'm female. And I'm better than you because I'm male. And I'm better than you because I got initials after my name. And I'm better than you because I'm a plumber. I mean, you put, figure out I'm better than you because X. Everybody's going to use whatever X they got. To assert some kind of superiority as if that was valuable. If you're constantly trying to be superior or win or beat somebody, 
count on it, you're five years old in your soul, just like Satan. Now, what remedy is there for that? Growing up, grow out of it, mature out of it. God's not like that. <laughs> you want to know what maturity looks like? Look at him. And if you look at him, you'll become more mature. And if you look at him, you won't need to beat anybody up. But there's two sides to the process, though. First, you got to learn the info. See, when I started all this, the angels had the info in them at the get-go. What was new was their own existence and their volition interacting with the information that was already in their heads. When we get born, we got nothing in our heads. We don't even know how to use our bodies. All that, we're one great big zero when we're born post-fall. When Adam and the woman were born, they had innate abilities from the get-go and, and innate knowledge. They had sex the very first night. The very first night the woman was created, she had sex with her husband, so she knew how to do that. Or was a quick learner, take your pick. Adam never had sex, and neither did she. The first moment she was created. So how'd they know what to do? I mean, it's not like a parent. It's not obvious what to do. Because man, the male and female anatomy is not made like another anatomy. Even the animals are very different. I mean, I suppose you could guess if you watch some monkeys. That's about as close as you get. How do they know what to do? Okay, we don't even know that. You don't even know how to lift your head when you're born. So we're learning completely from scratch. Therefore, we're more likely to be, and we are, of course, childish. But that's only half the battle. You got a two-sided ignorance at birth, post-fall. No knowledge, and nobody, you know, what do you want to call it, coordination with the knowledge. You don't know how to use your body either, even just to use it. And you certainly don't know how to coordinate your body with your brain. And you don't have any information in your brain to coordinate with your body, so you don't know all of that. You don't know anything. Okay, fine. It takes, obviously, therefore, a long time to learn. Nobody expects a newborn child to go become a brain, to go do brain surgery. He can't even move his fingers properly, let alone have all that medical knowledge but he's gonna have to get the medical knowledge first to know what he's supposed to do with his fingers and then once he's got the medical knowledge which is ideally like around 25 or 30 because you have to go to school for a long time for this and when he's about 25 or 30 he can start practicing on human brains under the supervision of some other doctor in the operating room. Prior to that, he's had to work on animal brains or cadavers. And he's going to have to do, like, you know, quite a few brain surgeries before he really becomes good at it because he has to coordinate the knowledge with the experience with his body and plus you know brain surgery like anything else there's a whole lot of variety to it not every brain problem is the same and so how many times is he going to see the same problem before he can be good at fixing that problem that's why surgeons get paid so much by the way 
They have to be really fast learners. They have to get it right the first time or their patient is dead and then they get no more patients. Okay? Now, in the spiritual life it's the same. Satan got the knowledge like all the angels at the get-go but his volition had to interact with the knowledge and it was all lots of fun at first. Until one day he realized, oh, I can't do anything for God. He's given me all these things to do so I can play and learn and it pleases him, but I can't really do anything for him. And so he's crestfallen. He's upset. He doesn't like that being true. He doesn't like it so much he has to eventually manufacture a lie that he will accept that says, well, God somehow made a mistake. Satan can not only do something that is as good as God, but actually better. When he says in what was it, uh, was Isaiah 14 or Ezekiel 28, I will make myself like the Most High. He means to take over. He considers himself the real Messiah, the Don Quixote of Don Quixotes. And so his integration with his knowledge has gone in that practical direction. So all of his integration of his knowledge with his soul, with his body and his life, is pretty much dedicated to beating God. Notice how it's a turning point. First obstacle is to get the knowledge for us. Just the knowledge. And that takes decades. Just like analogous to learning how to be a brain surgeon. First you gotta get the knowledge. Okay, but that's only half the battle, honey, because now you gotta practice the knowledge you got. And that's why God marvels it so you get a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of practice. A little bit of knowledge and a little bit of practice. A little more knowledge, a little more practice. A little more knowledge, a little more practice. And of course in the areas where you're really, really negative, then you got no knowledge and lots of practice, but it's practice based on no knowledge, so you might as well be two years old. That's what Christianity is. They're practicing, 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 practicing without knowledge. I think the Bible calls that zeal without knowledge. Ah, yeah, okay, you got practice without knowledge. Well, then your practice is worth bupkis because you don't have the knowledge to go with it. Okay, but what good is the knowledge without the practice? That's where I'm at. I got all kinds of knowledge, honey. I'm mature in knowledge like you can't believe. But what about practice? Not, nope, nope. In some respects, I'm five years old there. That's what happened to Satan. He had the knowledge. And then it hit up against some capital childish idea that he wanted to count for God. And after that, all the extra knowledge he had and all the extra practice he had got suborned into that goal of being able to count for God. And count for God ended up meaning count to God. And count to God ended up meaning count over God. That's how it morphed. Is it going to morph that way in me too? Maybe. That lady hasn't sung yet. <clears throat> Is it going to morph that way in you? Maybe. That lady hasn't sung yet. So it's constantly a problem of a balance an integration process balance between what you know why you want to keep on and what you do with what you know 
if you want to keep on because of God then your knowledge is going to always be running in front because you're learning and living on Bible, learning and living on Bible, learning and living on Bible, using one John one nine, learning and living on Bible, learning and living on Bible, learning and living on Bible, using one John one nine, learning and living on Bible. So the knowledge is running in front, which it needs to do, just like for a brain surgeon. And your practice is running behind. Greek word is proxis, and unfortunately, you know, your religions are so busy on proxis they have no knowledge big term in Greek Orthodox religion, praxis. But practice without knowledge is what Greek Orthodox is all, is all about. Same thing with Roman Catholicism and most of Christianity. Do, 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 do. And what happens if you do, 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 do without knowledge? Do, do. So they're busy doing do, do. So, they're not constipated yet. They are. They're spiritually constipated and they're physically diuretic. Doing, 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 doing doo doo. Yeah, and pouring their spit all over everybody. I mean, I know, it's a Greek word for it. Defiled is the English translation. It means to throw your chamber pot out the window, and yes, they had chamber pots in ancient Rome. There are even plays about it in juvenile. You have to be careful where you walk. That's why they develop things like awnings. Which didn't look like modern awnings today. Point is that you spit on everybody all over when you got lots of dues and no knowledge. And that's what Christianity's busy doing. Now Satan knows full well that's what it is. That's what he wants it for. Because his knowledge is running ahead of his own practice, but his own practice is now skewed to be the enemy of God. And in order to make us all effectively enemies of God, all he has to do is keep us unknowing. He's very good at that, as you can see. But once you are knowing, you can't just sit there with it. So if you're spiritually constipated and physically diuretic, or are you spiritually constipated and spiritually and physically constipated? Or are you spiritually diuretic and physically constipated? cute. I put myself in the last category. Knowledge running ahead but the action is not. It means that there's some childish objection that is not breaking free. So remember I closed in the last increment about how well physician heal thyself. You can't do anything for your fellow man. Pray for him. But you can't expect that the problem's going to get solved. So you just pray to God and you try to grow up yourself? Okay, but when you try to grow up yourself, how do you diagnose yourself? Am I spiritually constipated or spiritually diuretic? Am I physically constipated or physically diuretic? Spirit Catholicism, Calvinism, all the isms in Christianity and Judaism are diuretic. Physically diuretic. No knowledge. Okay, but then the few of us who've got the knowledge are we physically constipated or diuretical still? In either case, it means that the plumbing, the throughput, the plumbing in working right. So where's the blockage if it's constipation? And if it's, you know, diuretic, then that means that there, yes, is a lack of knowledge somewhere that because of some childish objection you're not getting. Which is it for you? Which is it for me? And if we don't find that solution 
to the irritable spiritual bowel syndrome then we ourselves aren't going to grow up no matter how much we pray ask God where your own childishness is and I gotta ask him the same thing seriously this is how the world gets saved if we're growing they're being bought time and God will grant them competencies they can't have on their own they can't because they won't learn him they're not interested they're still stuck in all their childish goals they're still playing with dolls they're still playing G.I. Joe they're still playing Mr. President or Monopoly or Mousetrap these are real games that people really live their lives on so they're not going to grow up I don't care how, how much they seem to accomplish in this world it's all dreck we're the ones who are really the rich ones we're the ones who are really the mature ones and if our maturity has blockages or overflows then theirs aren't going to get better so ask God, where am I being childish? And then try to withstand the answer. Ask him to give you the strength to withstand the answer. And of course ask him to grow you out of it. And keep on voting like that. Even when you don't want to, try. Fall down, use one John 1 9, get up. It hurts, it really does. It is the hardest thing to do. This is internal brain surgery. And if we're doing it, if we're asking for it really, not actually doing it, he's doing it. If we're asking for him to do it and we keep on asking, that will do the most that can be done for the rest of the world. Because it buys them time. As long as you and I are growing, the world gets to be a better place to live in. Because we're on it. It's totally opposite view to, versus what Christianity panders versus what Judaism panders if you want to do a good deed for somebody else get God to heal you and he's not going to do it if you're not asking and the kind of healing you need is to be healed from wherever your childishnesses are and count on it if Satan is childish so are you so am I but where? And understand that it's a knowledge problem and then a practice problem. And if the two aren't meeting up the way they're supposed to, what my pastor like to call the tandem, if they're not meeting up the way they're supposed to, then we're either diuretic or constipated. And um, I don't know about you, but I would guess somewhere in your physical life that's going to show up. Talk to God about it. I'm going to go do that right now.